probably in 2025, we at Meta are going to have an AI that can effectively be a sort of mid-level engineer that can write code. We're hearing this from the person running the biggest software company on earth. They have enough money, they have access to the best talent, and even they won't need that anymore, or at least not that much. They will be able to replace a lot of the labor with AI software engineering agents. And imagine what will happen to the average software company that is not capable to attract this level of talent. Right now, they will be accelerated so much. And Mark describes what will happen in this year. Imagine what will happen in one year from now, two years from now, or five years from now. The world of software engineering will be completely different. And just to clarify, what is a mid-level software engineer? I worked in three top-tier tech companies, and from my experience, this is the person who is capable of pretty much all the tasks except for two things. First of all, complex system design, and second, managing and leading other software engineers. So it's pretty much a very capable unit to create all of the tasks that you need. And let's continue watching, there are some more interesting things. And once you have that, then in the beginning it'll be really expensive to run, and then you can get it to be more efficient, and then over time we'll get to the point where a lot of the code in our apps and, and including the AI that we generate is actually going to be built by AI engineers instead of people engineers. But, but I don't know. I, I think that that'll augment the people working on it. This is insane. And I completely agree with what he's saying. Like, we never had too little of a demand for software. The demand was already insane. We had the bottleneck with the supply. And right now, this bottleneck will be eliminated. And all these software engineer workers they will be so much more enhanced and they will be able to produce more software with the same level of effort. And just to explain a little bit how the work in software companies looks like right now, you have this tech lead or a senior developer who is managing lower level engineers. And usually this person is accountable to make the system design, understand what is the business need currently, what we should implement, how it will be done, and then like it goes to the lower levels. And usually like we have some back and forth, some communication, maybe like a junior or middle level engineer has to come up with some sort of feature, with some sort of idea, then it gets approved by a tech lead, then this mid-level person writes the code, then we have the reviewing process. And with these AI agents, this will be so much enhanced, so much quicker than it is right now. And what is actually very interesting, in my opinion, imagine the cost of mistake in two different scenarios. First one, with the regular engineers. For instance, we have some communicational error where the tech lead didn't convey the full context about the task to this mid-level engineer. And for that reason, this mid-level engineer spent maybe like two days working on the wrong thing or without having like the right approach or the right context. And only after two days, we eventually find out that this was an error and we actually wasted these two days. We spent money on the salary of this engineer and also we spent two days. And right now, this iteration cycle will be so much quicker because if we made the mistake, we will know about it right away because AI agent was not able to complete the task successfully. I've seen it with my own eyes and this saving will be immense. Let's continue. So I mean, my, my view on this is like, the future, people are just gonna be so much more creative and are gonna be freed up to do kind of crazy things. It goes back to, you know, my daughter was like playing with Legos before and mm -hmm. they kind of ran out of Legos. And then now she can have Minecraft and can build whatever she wants and it's so much better. It's just like, I think it's, the future versions of this stuff are just gonna be wild, but. Unquestionably. Yeah. Uh, another concern that people have is that it's going to eliminate a lot of jobs. Yeah. You know, what do you think about that? Well, I, I think it's too it's too early to know exactly how it plays out. But my guess is that it'll probably create more creative jobs than it. I, I guess if you look at the history of all this stuff. But my understanding is like 100 years ago. In, I don't know if this was 100 or 150 years ago, but it was like at some point not too far along uh, in, in the grand scheme of things, like the vast majority of people in society were farmers, right? Because they kind of needed to be in order to create enough food for, for everyone to survive. And then we turned that into a in, like an industrial process. And now it's like 2% of society are farmers and we get all the food that we need. So what did that free up everyone else to do? Well, some of them went on to do other things that are sort of like creative pursuits or cultural pursuits or other jobs. And then some percent of it just went towards recreation, right? So I think generally people just don't work as many hours today as they did when back when everyone needed to farm in order to have enough food for everyone to survive. So I think that trend is sort of played out as technology has grown. And so my guess is that like the percent of people who will be doing stuff that's like, 
physically required for humanity to survive will get to be smaller and smaller as it has. More people will dedicate themselves to kind of creative and artistic and cultural pursuits. Um, I think that's generally good. I think the number of hours in a week that someone will have to work in order to be able to get by will probably continue to shrink. Yet, I think people who are super engaged in what they do are going to be able to work really hard and accomplish way more than they ever could before because they have um, like this unimaginable leverage from, from having a lot more technology. So I think that that, if you just like fast forwarded or extrapolated out the, the historical technological trend is what you'd get. I think the question is what you raised, which is, is this qualitatively a different type of thing that somehow obsoletes people? But I, I just think when you're asking that, it's just important to remind ourselves that like at every step along the way of human progress and technology, people thought that the technology that we were developing was going to obsolete people. So maybe this time it's really different, but I would guess that what will happen is that the technology will get integrated into like everything that we do, which again is why I think it's really important that it's open source and that it's widely available. So that way it's not just like one company or one government kind of monopolizing the whole thing. Extract positivity from these words. The guys really predicting the future, saying how it all will look like. And uh, instead of like being always shocked with the level of progress that we are seeing with these technologies, just kind of understand what will happen in two years from now and five years from now and try to kind of aim there without trying to be on par with the level of this technology, understand what you have to aim for in the future and just try to make little actions right now to get there and you will be so much better off than other people who are not understanding this. And another thing, Mark is saying that you will like, the majority of people will need less to do to get by. And with this thing, I kind of disagree because just from the economical standpoint, how the life of an actual average person looks like. I go to work, I make money on my work, and then I spend my money. But from the business standpoint, if it's cheaper to hire an AI agent instead of this employee, why would I ever hire this person? For that reason, the demand for many, many workers will go down. And for that reason, in my opinion, this is very questionable what Mark is saying. But what I'm very certain about is that all the people who are kind of related to AI, they will be in a huge demand. If you are now like a professional in some particular industry and you are starting to learn and adapt AI in many ways about how you can use AI to solve your own tasks better, then you will be in very high demand for sure because your productivity will explode because you will be AI enhanced. And also all these businesses, they will need to use AI in their operations. And if you are the person who knows how to do that, the most efficiently, of course, they will need you and you will produce a lot of value. But of course, you can also run your own business using all these AI tools. The world will need so much more people who know how to deploy AI, how to fix it, how to direct it, experts in AI ethics, experts in AI infrastructure. So if you can learn it right now, if you can direct your attention in these areas, this will be immensely beneficial for your future career. So all in all, this trend is huge. You have to pay attention to what is going on, especially if you're a software engineer, because this industry will change in five years immensely. We will not be able to recognize that anymore, but probably even in one year, it will be changed drastically. Don't ignore these things. Plan your own strategy, take concrete actions for the better future. Join the tribes of like-minded people who are also trying to be early AI adapters. And all together, you will figure out how to go there, how to build the better career with these AI tools. And with all that, you will be set up for the win. If you find the content valuable, please subscribe to the channel and hit the like button.